Hello YouTube, my name's Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Zombies in this week's episode of Dear Nero, which of course is the weekly series here on my channel where subscribers send me in fan mail and or fan questions, I had to best go and answer them. The gameplay here, Mob of the Dead, I thought it was especially relevant because of course we learned so much about Black Ops 3 Zombies over the past week or so, and we did learn that the Black Ops 3 Zombie map Shadows of Evil is going to be kind of like a continuation in some respects of the story and kind of set in like the same period as what we saw here with Mob of the Dead. And then also another little side note is that the remake that they're going to be doing of World at War's Map the Reese, they're going to be remaking it into the Map the Giant that is actually going to be along the same timeline and story as Origins. So basically there's like all these different storylines and timelines going on with zombies. Very, very interesting. But the core zombies experience in Black Ops 3 that we're going to be getting along with the zombies experience that we're going to be getting with the rest of the DLC is going to be set in kind of the same timeline as what we saw here in Mob of the Dead. So I thought let's hop on the 360. It's been a while since I fired up the old 360. Let's hop on here, and boy, am I bad with these sticks. Like, getting used to the 360 controller when you're used to, like, the Xbox One controller, it just takes a little bit. I had to up my sensitivity a lot because it felt really slow. But yeah, we're playing Grief here, and I think Grief, man, I just want to, like, say this right here from the very beginning. I think Grief is really, really fun. I love doing Grief, especially here, like, on the map Mob of the Dead. It's really fun to play on this map, as well as the rest of the maps, but Mob of the Dead in particular, I think, is a very good Grief map. They kind of make the map a little bit smaller. There's all these people on there. You're kind of trying to screw over the other team. You're trying to out last now survive the other team i think it's kind of a cool game mode and we didn't really hear anything about whether or not it would be in black ops 3 but i really hope that this is a feature in black ops 3 zombies let's hop into here with the first question he's going to rate dear nero what dlc weapons are you hoping treyarch brings into black ops 3 do you think that free maps can increase sales and another random question what is your favorite cereal green jose from texas so there's like three questions here in one the first one what dlc weapons am i hoping that treyarch brings into Black Ops 3. So, of course, Treyarch's new game, Black Ops 3, is going to be set in the future, and we're not exactly sure what kind of weapons we're going to have there. Most of them are futuristic-looking weapons, kind of like a continuation, kind of an extension, if you will, of kind of what we saw in Black Ops 2. What I would like to bring, what I would like for them to bring, I should say, in terms of DLC weapons is throwback weapons to their older games. This is just like an idea I had. They should bring back two weapons, like for one DLC. Make it not even one of the major DLCs. Usually we get four major DLCs every Call of Duty. There should be like a middle DLC, which you can purchase it for like $10 or so. And that DLC will come with six new weapons. And those six weapons will actually be throwback weapons to three of the most recent Treyarch games, Call of Duty World at War, Black Ops, and Black Ops 2. Now, some suggestions for weapons I would like to see kind of brought into the game via this DLC. The Thompson from World of War. You guys know me. I love the Tommy gun. Maybe a Mosnagon sniper rifle. These are all World at War ones. Uh, Thompson, a Mosnagon sniper rifle, a double barrel shotgun. Those would be really cool. Maybe an M1A1 carbine. I think that'd be pretty cool as well. In terms of Black Ops 1 guns, I'd like to see possibly return in Black Ops 3. I'm thinking the Galil. I love the Galil, the AK-74U, definitely. Maybe the Olympia. The Olympia was a fun shotgun, I gotta say. I, I, I just like the idea of a double-barrel shotgun and the over-under configuration that the Olympia had was really unique and really fun to use. Uh, again, the Galil, maybe the AK-47, maybe even the FAMAS. Well, the FAMAS was like OP in Black Ops, and it kind of had that stigma because it was like the OP gun, you know? I still love the way the gun looks. I love the way the gun shot and the way it sounded and everything. I just tried not to use it that much because it was a ridiculously powerful gun. But yeah, those are some of the guns I'd like to see return from Black Ops. And in Black Ops 2, some of my favorite guns like the Remington 870. I would love for that to be in the game, although we looks like we appear to have a pretty similar gun from what we saw in the trailer of Black Ops 3, but I'd love for the 870 to come back, my most used weapon in Black Ops 2. Maybe the M8A1, right? Maybe the MP7, the MSMC. Some of the popular guns that people like from Call of Duty years past, bring those into the game as DLC weapons. Of course, what we saw here with uh, Advanced Warfare, they're able to just bring in a bunch of extra guns. They've added in so many DLC guns, they're going to be adding even more here soon to the game, so I think it's entirely possible for them just to kind of remake the these weapons and bring them in via a DLC. And again, would you guys pay for this? Let me know in the comments. For a ten or ten dollar DLC, right? For ten dollars, you get uh, six weapons, and two of them are going to be from each game. Two weapons that come from World of War, two weapons that come from Black Ops, two weapons that come from Black Ops Two. I don't know what those weapons would be, but let's say for six guns and ten dollars, would you pay that? Because I think I would, and I think a lot of people would, because that seems like a pretty good deal considering they're going to be selling the OHM for three dollars itself in Advanced Warfare here. So I don't know. I think that'd be a pretty good bargain. Uh, the next part of the question: uh, Do I? 
might think that free DLC maps can increase sales. I do. I think any kind of a free content can definitely increase sales, especially if you advertise the fact that your game is continuously coming out with free content. That way, people that maybe haven't bought the game yet, they think, wow, I should buy that game because they're going to continue to give us free stuff over the course of the game's life cycle. Definitely, that can increase sales. So, they it's, it's, it's tricky, man. It's really tricky what they're doing over there at Sledgehammer. So, they are giving us a lot of free DLC, right? They're giving us a lot of free DLC in the form of weapons like the M1 Irons, you're going to have the STG-44, and you know, of course you're going to have the SVO, and of course you're going to have the blunderbuss that's going to come by default. You're getting these free weapons, right? You're getting this free stuff in the game. But at the same time, at the same time, you kind of have to pay a little bit for it because some of it is restricted behind the idea of advanced supply drops. The reason why they're giving us these three weapons is one, because they like to give us free stuff and it's just a little bit of, hey, we love you guys. Thank you for continuing to play our game. But at the same time, the reason why they're giving us so much free stuff is because they know we're going to try to buy advanced supply drops to get this stuff. Like the STG-44, you know for a fact I'm going to be opening up like 50 advanced supply drops today that comes out trying to get that thing. I'll make a video of it like I usually do. But I'm in a unique situation where I can make an entire video on. Of course, I make money here for my YouTube channel, so it kind of evens itself out in the end. But not everybody's in that situation, and a lot of people are probably going to end up spending a lot of their money on these advanced supply drops because they want these new weapons, right? That's the thing. So that's the reason why they continue to give us free DLC. But yeah, I think overall, just to, uh, to answer your question in general, yes, I do think free DLC maps and just free DLC content in general can increase sales. It just depends on how the game developer plans on going about it. And the third part of the question, this could be a random question, what is my favorite cereal? So I don't really have a favorite cereal. I'm not much of a cereal guy. I ate tons of cereal growing up. So my favorite cereal growing up would be like Fruity Pebbles and uh, Chocolate Fruity Pebbles. Or I guess they're called Cocoa Pebbles, right? Um, let's see here. There's Cinnamon Toast Crunch, French Toast Crunch. Let's see. There's oh so many kinds. But back in the day, for whatever reason, there was like a special Simpsons brand cereal. Like there's a Bart brand and there was like a Homer brand and both of them were fantastic. But the Bart kind, I think, was like this kind of like a cinnamon flavor, which was really, really, really good. Honey Bunches of Oats was fantastic. Just so much cereal. Man, I don't think I necessarily have a favorite, but French Toast Crunch was fantastic. They actually brought that back. Is that still out? I know they brought it back for a short period of time. And I did buy uh, a couple boxes of that, and, I, and it was fine. But I'm just not that much of a cereal person anymore. You know, growing up, I'd wake up every morning, I'd have cereal. If I was hungry in the afternoon, I got off of school, I'd have cereal. If I just wanted a snack, I would have cereal. You know, I had cereal all the time growing up. But as I've gotten older, it's just like, eh, I'm not much of a cereal person anymore. Like, when I wake up for breakfast and stuff, I want, like, food, not, like, just cereal. I don't know. I used to be a big cereal person, but I don't eat much of it anymore. Next question, he's going to write... Dear Nero, do you buy your games on Xbox One digitally or do you buy a retail copy? I personally prefer retail copies because I enjoy going to GameStop and picking up the game, unwrapping it, and knowing that the game is mine and I can do what I want with it. I can let a friend borrow it, sell it back when I complete it, then recoup some of the money, or if it's just a single player game, why would I want to keep it forever since I don't plan on playing it again? I also like to go to used game stores and buy games there too. Plus, digital games are the exact same price as physical games. Keep up the great work, Jacob from Indiana. So do I buy my games digitally or do I buy the retail copy on Xbox One? So it really depends on which game it is, but for the most part, I usually end up getting a retail copy. A digital is fine. I don't have any problem with digital. I've downloaded some games digital. Recently, I got WWE 2K15 for no reason whatsoever on the Xbox One and end up getting it digitally just because I was like, that game looks like it'd be fun. I used to play a lot of these wrestling games growing up. I think it'd be pretty cool. I don't want to get up and drive to the store and like purchase it and stuff i'm just gonna buy it here you know right away download it be good to go but then again it takes a while to download but still that's what i ended up doing and so i i agree with you on some respects especially when it comes to consoles there's really no advantage to having digital over having the actual game itself so if you buy a digital version of the game you don't have to keep track of it you don't have to worry about it getting damaged you don't have to worry about it getting stolen now, those are some of the advantages right but when you're playing on console those are really the only advantages when you're playing on pc most people buy all of their games digitally there's very few people i think that actually get the physical copy of a game unless they're specifically trying to get like a collector's edition or something that comes with some extra stuff with it you know for the most part we get our games digitally on pc just because it's usually cheaper which is something consoles don't do i don't understand why they don't do that on steam they put these games on sale and they usually just have them retailed for a lot lower because they're digital copies right you don't have to be paying extra people like walmart or gamestop or whoever they're cut you don't have to actually be putting the resources and the time and money into making the actual disc and the cases and the little manuals that come with it you don't have to do any of that it's just a 
digital game you can download, so therefore they usually sell it cheaper on Steam. Of course, they have a bunch of sales always going on because they know if you put a game on sale, more people are going to buy it. Like, for example, let's say 10 people were going to buy this game when it was at full price, but if you put it on sale for like 50% off, then suddenly 20 people are going to buy that game because it was on sale, and you're going to make either the same amount of money or more money because you actually put the game on sale, which is pretty nice overall, all things considered. So that's the reason why I think digital platforms like the on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 and even some of the older consoles, the reason why I don't think digital has really taken off is because they're still charging the same price for digital versions of the game. Now, if Microsoft and Sony were to try and make it so that their their online store, right, the, the Xbox One uh, Marketplace and the Sony Store, I don't know what it's called, but I'm going to assume, for those of you guys that missed it, which I put this on Twitter, but chances are most of you guys didn't end up seeing it, I did in fact finally buy my PlayStation 4 and it's going to be here apparently on Friday, so in a couple of days. Ended up being a really good deal because of Amazon Prime Day. I got the PlayStation 4. It came with The Witcher Wild Hunt, which looks okay. Uh, I've never been into The Witcher series, but I hear The Wild Hunt's pretty good, and Witcher itself's a really good series, so maybe I'll give that a bash, as well as it came with Batman Arkham Knight, new Batman game. Some people have been really enjoying that, as well as a year of PlayStation Plus, and all that was for $400. So I was like, yeah, I'm totally going to buy that. So I bought that, but if Sony and Microsoft want to sell more digital copies of their games, try selling them for a little bit cheaper than the physical copies, because physical copies, I understand, cost more to make. You have to make the disc, you have to make the case, you have to send it out to these uh, retailers, be it uh, GameStop or be it Walmart or Target or whoever, you're, wherever it is you're buying your games, right? I don't know who exactly all uh, sells games. I usually buy all my stuff from Walmart, which is right down the road, or I go to GameStop, which is, oh, roughly 20, 25, 30 minutes away from here. But yeah, Jacob, I totally agree with you. There's no real advantages to having a digital version of a console game because you're not getting any of the extra stuff. You're not actually getting the physical copy of it yourself that you can, you know, give to your friend or have people borrow or do whatever it is you want with it or sell it back if you want to, which is usually a ripoff, but still if you wanted to do that or what have you, you know, there's really no advantages. There's no there's no price reduction or anything like that. So until that ends up happening, yeah, digital games on consoles are kind of silly. But then again, the advan there is also the advantage of I'm feeling lazy today. I don't want to go to the store, which is why that's why I digitally downloaded WWE 2K15. I was just like, I don't want to go to the store to get this. I'm going to be doing some stuff today anyway. So how about I just buy this on my Xbox? I'm going to let it download in the background, then I'm going to go do some other stuff, and then I'm kind of like passively acquiring that game while doing other things, which is sometimes nice. But yeah, I totally agree that on console, not really a big uh, reason for you to go ahead and get digital games. But of course, on PC, digital is totally the way to go unless you're looking to get like a collector's edition or anything like that, because usually you get a lot of cool stuff with it, as well as price reductions and things of that nature. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, I've always loved your videos, and your montages in particular have always been, in my opinion, better than all of the other montages with trickshotting and crazy seizure editing. I recently rewatched a few of your old montages, my favorite being Damn, and they are just so fun. So now, finally getting to the question, do you wish that you could go back in time and make all of your old montages as high quality in terms of editing and such as your new ones, or would you keep them as fun and sincere as they are now? I realize your current montages are still simpler and less obnoxious than some, but still, I think you know what I mean. I love your videos, and I've been watching since Modern Warfare 3, and I just want to thank you for some of the greatest times I've ever spent on YouTube. Keep up the fantastic videos, Sam from Pennsylvania. So Sam, thank you for looking back at my old montage. I think people forget that those exist. There are a lot of old ones. The one in particular that you discussed uh, here in this question was Damn, which was really just like a out of nowhere. Like I feel like putting together a montage. I'm putting together this montage now. I didn't really spend much time editing it. I ended up using a song by Rumi and I put it together. Although there were some really cool clips in that montage. I really enjoyed it. To answer the question, would I like to go back to some of my uh, montages and maybe redo them, maybe re-edit them or... Uh, uh, change things around. I think totally I would, and I look back at just any video, like literally any video that I put up, I wish I could go back and change it, because I'm never satisfied with what I put together in the video. If you actually go ahead and look at the video that I posted up yesterday, the video I posted up yesterday was kind of an interesting title, I suppose, but it was, uh, I give up, you win the sledgehammer. I talk about the Ball 27 and the SM1, how I just don't care about those things in particular, but if you actually look at the video itself, which the video was well received, I didn't really see any people complaining about it, but for me, I tried something a little bit different in terms of how I did the coloring in that video, and I thought it was a little bit too a little bit too bright, a little bit too vibrant. It almost looked cartoony in a way, and it didn't look very sharp. It didn't look very clear. It almost looked like, I don't really know how to describe it. It wasn't sharp, I think, is the best way to describe how the colors looked in that video. And I'm really kind of annoyed by it. I wish I could go back and change it, but like that would involve taking down the video, re-editing it, re-rendering it, re-uploading it for stuff that I'm personally, I'm kind of sensitive to because I'm a YouTuber, and 
and I look at videos like all day, every day. So I'm kind of sensitive to that kind of thing. But I think most people that watch videos just don't care about that. And I look back at some of my older montages and stuff. Of course, I look back and it's like, wow, what was I thinking with that editing? Like that was just that was that was just stupid looking. That was silly looking. You know, why would I do that? Or maybe I'd pick a different song or find a higher quality version of a song. Like I spent so long. Like literally, I spent like um, had to have been like 10 plus hours. I can't even remember how long I spent editing together this video. It was Origins from Black Ops 2 Zombies, and we played maybe four hours. Like, it was a four-hour long recording of myself and my friends playing on that map. And what I did was I kind of edited together those four hours and condensed them all down into, like, a four-minute montage, kind of like a highlight, almost like a music video of zombies in a way. And I spent so much time editing that and going back into the game and going into theater mode and using the theater mode uh, for zombies and trying to get all these shots and setting up these angles and stuff. And I spent so long playing it together. And when it finally went, got uploaded and if it was finally up on my channel, there was people complaining that the audio quality wasn't very good because the song, which was the uh, I Can See Them Everywhere zombie song that was one of the Easter egg songs, the song wasn't very high quality, but I couldn't tell because at the time, which keep in mind this was a long time ago, I had this dinky headset, which wasn't very good. So to me, it all sounds like roughly the same. Well, if you get like a high quality headset or stuff that you can actually hear stuff very well out of, uh, it was obviously a very lower quality song. And like, oh, I was just so frustrated at that. Just like the little things I wish I could go back and change. Uh, yeah, totally. But I still am satisfied with all of my montages that are up here on my YouTube channel. I like them all a lot and I'm looking forward to making some more and end up getting some uh, pretty cool clips as of recently. There's going to be an Advanced Warfare montage. I'm just not exactly sure when it's going to be. So uh, thank you for your, your continued support, Sam Pennsylvania, saying you've been watching since Modern Warfare 3. That's a very long time. Near Cinema was started just before Modern Warfare 3 came out, so you were definitely a longtime fan. I'm definitely happy to see that you're still here after all of these years. Next question, he's going to write, Dear Nero, what are your opinions on the Confederate flag controversy? Matt from Ohio. So Matt, I am in this boat where I just don't care one way or the other. I really don't care, you know. If you guys want to get rid of the Confederate flag, if you want to make it so it is just completely erased from history, well, not necessarily erased from history, it's always going to be there in a part of history, but if you want to remove it from all government buildings, you want to make it so people uh, can't buy it or whatever, what have you, I mean, if you make it so people can't buy it, people are still going to get it one way or another. In fact, more people are going to buy it because people say they can't buy it. But uh, if you want to try and get rid of the Confederate flag, I, I don't care personally. I live in Pennsylvania. It doesn't bother me. But if you want to keep it up because it has a lot of historical significance and you want to keep it like it's always been, I don't care either. I, I really, really don't care. I did get a couple questions about the Confederate flag controversy, and I just personally don't care one way or the other. It's one of those things where it's like, are you on this side of the debate or this side of the debate? And I'm like, can I be in the middle where I just don't care? And if you, whatever you guys do, I'm fine with. <laughs> because it's never bothered me. I, I, I don't live in the South. I've never owned a Confederate flag. I don't know anybody that has owned a Confederate flag. I don't have any clothing that has a Confederate flag on it. I don't have any. It, it's just not a part. Uh, it's not a part of my world. It's it's something I don't really care too much about. So do whatever you want with it. But I will point out that nobody seemed to really be bothered by the Confederate flag until it came out that there was that video. Because, of, of course, that guy did the mass shooting. It, no one really seemed to care about the Confederate flag until that video of him next to the Confederate flag before he committed the shooting came out. So just saying, man, nobody seemed to care before. I don't see why they care so much now. But again, it doesn't matter to me. If you want to get rid of it, get rid of it. If you want to keep it, keep it. I personally do not care one way or the other. Next question, he's going to write, Dear Nero, do you have any plans for more RPG-style games after the Borderlands DLC like Titan Quest, Diablo, or Dark Souls? I love watching long episodes of longer games like your Borderlands walkthrough. I'm sure your fans and community will also have many suggestions for games to play. Thanks, Black Scarecrow. So, Mr. Scarecrow, do I have plans after Borderlands? I do. Right now on the list is Advanced Warfare's campaign, which I've yet to freaking play. Usually, I've been waiting longer and longer every year, so when World of War came out, I played the campaign, like, immediately. You know, when Modern Warfare 2 came out, I played the campaign not immediately, but pretty soon after launch. When Black Ops came out, I ended up playing it, but not right as uh, the game had come out. And I keep putting off the campaign longer and longer every single year. Like, I waited, like, to, like, halfway through the life cycle of Ghosts to actually go through and play through that campaign. And now that uh, Advanced Warfare is out, I'm like, wow, we're, like, almost three-fourths of the way through the life cycle, and I still haven't played the campaign. I just get so invested in the multiplayer. But I do want to play the campaign, because I've heard the campaign is good. It does have a terrible ending, apparently, like what COD Ghost had. I don't have any spoilers. I'm not spoiling anything here about Ghost or Advanced Warfare, but I just asked people that have completed the Advanced Warfare campaign. I'm like, does the ending have a really 
crappy moment like what happened in Ghosts. And they're like, no, 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 campaign ending isn't terrible like it was in Ghosts. I'm like, oh, cool, I'll probably play it then. Yeah, so I'm going to be doing uh, the Advanced Warfare campaign. I'm definitely going to be doing that. Wolfenstein, I'm going to be trying some of the Wolfenstein game out. I, I, I think they're right up my alley. I really do. I think the Wolfenstein games would probably be right up my alley, along with continuing uh, Hearthstone and stuff like that over my Let's Play channel. Other RPG games, though, I'm, of course, always open to your guys' suggestions, but ultimately it's going to come down to what I want to play. That's the whole point of Nier's Let's Plays. It's just games I feel like playing, games I want to play, and I post them up in a Let's Play style format. Usually, I mean, Black Scarecrow here probably loves that channel if he enjoys uh, longer videos of longer games, because that's really all that channel is. Usually every uh, video is roughly 30 minutes or longer, usually between 30 minutes and an hour long of me just playing through a game, whatever game it may be. Depends on the day, I suppose, but uh, yeah, those are the games I have on my plate, and those are the games I'm going to be playing on playing in the near future, but of course, I'm always interested to hear what you guys like to play and what games you guys think I should play, but ultimately, once again, it's going to come down to whether or not to actually decide I would like to play them. Next question, he's going to write, Dear Nero, this is what I actually get a lot, so I figured I'd go ahead and answer it. What are your favorite things to watch on Netflix, Riley from California? So, Riley, I haven't watched Netflix in ages. I really haven't. I haven't watched Netflix in ages. I've almost completely completely taken like television or movies or anything like that and just replaced it with Twitch and YouTube. Like I watch other people's YouTube videos and I watch like Twitch live streams and stuff like that and that's really like my source of entertainment. I do watch ESPN like when I'm going to bed. Like I sit there and I just kind of like watch yeah, like Sports Center. I have that on the TV as I fall asleep. But aside from that, I don't really watch a lot of television. When I used to watch Netflix, I used to watch a lot of King of the Hill, which is like my favorite show. Uh, ever since I was like, you know, 12 or 13 or so, I started watching King of the Hill and I thought that show was fantastic. Then they took it off Netflix, so I was like, oh, wow, that stinks. And that's mainly the reason why I stopped watching Netflix, because I would really use it for King of the Hill. Uh, I used to use it to watch The Walking Dead, but I, I watch The Walking Dead as it comes out, like I record it uh, as it comes on TV, so I watch it that way, so I didn't have to watch it on Netflix. I do remember I went on a binge one night, um... Uh, basically, it was when I was getting into The Walking Dead, I asked subscribers on Twitter. I was like, guys, I'm thinking about watching The Walking Dead, but I'm not sure if it's really going to be that good. And all the episodes are like 45 minutes to an hour long. I was like, that's really kind of an investment for something that you're not sure if you're going to like it, you know. And keep in mind, this was back... Oh, probably season three of The Walking Dead was about when that happened. I'm like, so many people have been talking about this show for ages now, but I've never really given it a chance. Like, should I watch this? It's on next Netflix. The first three seasons are here. Should I watch this? Everyone's like, yes, Nero, just watch the first episode. You'll get so invested in it, I promise. And so I watched the first episode. I'm like, this show is amazing. And so I proceeded to sit down and watch three seasons worth of The Walking Dead in one night, back to back, one after another. I, I went on binges like that. And back when Netflix, and they removed this, and I again, I haven't used Netflix in a very long time. I still have a subscription to it, but I just haven't used it in a long time. Let me know in the comments if they've added this back to Netflix. I think it'd be fantastic. There used to be a feature where you could watch Netflix with other people on Xbox Live, and it was so good. It was amazing. Like there was actually a whole like movie theater system that you had there. If you guys didn't see that, you can Google it. If you guys weren't around on Netflix when this was a feature, but you could take your avatars like on Xbox Live, and you would go into like this movie theater, and you guys could all watch like the same show or the same movie on Netflix at the same time together, like in real time, which was great. And if you didn't want to have like the movie theater there with all your avatars and stuff you can actually zoom in on the on the show itself and make the actual show full screen which was fantastic but they ended up removing it for one reason or another and i really have no reason why that was great i used to watch netflix all the time with like the people i would play call of duty with all the time like the, my friends i would play uh, xbox with you know we would go and watch netflix we'd like pick movies and stuff and sometimes we'd find some horrible ones like uh, occasionally we would go through like the horror section and we'd pick what uh, we would believe to be like a like a scary movie or a creepy movie and we would all just kind of hang out and just chat in a party chat and watch this movie together. We ended up watching what was the name of that terrible, terrible, terrible movie? One second here. I think I can Google it real quick. I'm going to Google. Let me look here. I'm pretty sure it's Cabin Rentals. Uh, Cabin Cabin Fever. Cabin Fever 2 was actually the name of it. It was Cabin Fever 2. That movie was disgusting. I think it came out, yeah, in 2009. Oh, that movie was foul. Like, it was, it was supposed to be a scary movie, and it had a really cool idea, like, Cabin Fever, are they going to be, like, out in the woods, and, like, they all go crazy and stuff like that? You know, is that going to be, like, the premise? Oh, no. Oh, no, that is not the premise of that movie whatsoever, and that movie was disgusting. There was nothing but gross, disgusting things in there. I'm not going to go into detail as to disgusting things I saw in that movie, but if you guys want to watch a very disgusting movie with pus-filled penises and uh, it, was a, it was a terrible movie don't watch that movie it was horrible i would not recommend zero out of ten would not recommend but we end up watching like the entirety of that we watch you know just a bunch of stuff documentaries and whatnot and uh yeah it was really cool when they had that and now if you want to watch movies with somebody like on netflix so you have to like be in a party chat together then you gotta be like all right so on one press play three 
two, one. And it's just like you're always gonna have that like that slight delay. It was always just so much better when you could actually watch something kind of like in real time with other people. But yeah, I haven't watched Netflix in ages. To be perfectly honest, I've almost replaced almost everything that I watch with YouTube and Twitch, which is kind of interesting. So a lot of people are actually doing the exact same thing. Let me know in the comments if you guys are kind of in the same boat as me, where you end up watching more YouTube and Twitch than you do like actual television or movies or Netflix. Let me know about that. Next day and final question, he's gonna write. Dear Nero, what do you think if in Black Ops 3, Treyarch were to bring back older zombie maps from World at War, Black Ops, and Black Ops 2, like they're doing by remaking Darius as the map The Giant? And do you think it would be interesting for players to replay these maps? Thank you for my first time being on Dear Nero, Elijah from Belarus. So Elijah, sad to say, man, sad to say there is not going to be any other remakes of zombie maps in Black Ops 3. At least that was relayed to us by people that were at the Comic-Con presentation this year. So at this year's Comic-Con, of course, that's where they revealed to us Black Ops 3 Zombies, and during kind of a Q&A with the developers and the people there, uh, some of the people in the crowd, they asked, will there be other remakes of zombie maps in this game? And they said, no, there was no plans to remake anything besides Darius, and Darius is going to be the only one that's going to be in Black Ops 3, which is kind of sad to say, because if you look at some of the older zombie maps, I think a lot of them could definitely benefit from kind of like a remastering. Of course, they had the Resurrection DLC and Black Ops 1, where they brought back the World of War maps, but that's all they really did. They basically brought back the maps. They did look a little bit better, because because they were on they were on the uh, Black Ops and they were in that game you know they had that game's graphics but at the end of the day they didn't really update the maps at all and I think it'd be cool for them to kind of update these maps and bring them into Black Ops 3. For example, you take the very first map, right? The very first map was Nocturne on Toten. It'd be cool if they were to take that map which was essentially four rooms. There was uh, two rooms downstairs, two rooms upstairs, no perks, one box that never moved, no pack a bunch, right? It's a very simple map. It's the first zombie map ever made. What if they were to remake and remaster that map in that you start off in that building where you have your four rooms but there's perks but there's pack-a-punch and you can leave that building go out into the field right and then maybe there's other buildings and other places for you to explore they could really do a lot with that and it would be pretty cool you look at Verrucked it was a really cool map I liked Verrucked these are all World of War maps keep in mind uh, that's a really fun map to play on but there's no pack-a-punch on there so it's kind of hard to do well at like the higher rounds aside from using traps on that map you look at Shinonuma right my favorite zombies map ever there's no pack-a-punch on that map which is kind of disappointing so they could definitely remake these maps maps and do some different things with them I think but it doesn't appear like they're going to be doing that I would love for a DLC and this is like going all the way back to the first question where I think it'd be cool if they were to take a take a guns from World at War guns from Black Ops and Black Ops 2 right all the Treyarch games and make them uh, like a nostalgic gun DLC for Black Ops 3 I think it'd also be cool if they were to do that with zombies maps you know for ten dollars maybe even fifteen bring back a bunch of uh, World at War Black Ops and Black Ops 2 zombie maps into the game but give them little updates if they need them you know bring back some of the maps from World of War. I know so many people love to play on Kino. Bring back Kino. That'd be kind of fun. I think people would like to be able to play on that. And of course, you'd have you know new graphics. You'd be playing it on your Xbox One and on your PlayStation 4. So I think it'd be cool to have updated graphics as well as for some of the older zombie maps like, uh, again, Shino Numa and Verrucked and Nocturne Toten that didn't have Pack-a-Punch or didn't have perks. Add perks and Pack-a-Punch to the maps and I think, uh, I think it'd be pretty cool. But sadly, I don't think they're going to be doing that. They did say that they don't have any plans to remake any other maps and right now, Darius is going to be the only remake that we're going to see in Black Ops 3, but then again, I'm excited for Darius, man. That was like the map from World of War that everybody loved. I think it's because it had perks, it had pack-a-punch, it had teleport and stuff, but it was like the map from that game and everybody seemed to like it, and it's still to this day regarded as like one of the best zombie maps ever. So I'm definitely thinking it's going to be really fun to play around on that map in Black Ops 3. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be this week's episode of Dear Nero. I hope you guys all enjoyed it, and if you did, please be sure to leave a rating where you guys feel be deserve some Call of Duty Black Ops 2 zombies today. Sad to say, we couldn't actually win that match, man. We could have won, but we actually facing a party of four on the other team. We could have won, I think, if uh, my teammates didn't quit and it didn't come down to just two of us. But, yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I mean, grief is fun. I really hope grief is in Black Ops 3 Zombies. It didn't mention it at all, but I'm really hoping that it's going to be a feature and it's going to be part of the Black Ops 3 Zombie experience that maybe they haven't necessarily been advertising. Maybe if they were to add in that, maybe if they were to add in, you know, even expand upon grief, make a map a little bit bigger and have it so there's more than just four people on each team. Make it so there's eight people on each team or something, but 
but it'd have to be on like a big map. I don't know. I'm interested to see what they're going to be doing with Black Ops 3 Zombies aside from what they've already revealed to us. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing more about that. But ladies and gentlemen, once again, that is going to be this week's episode of Dear Nero. If you guys would like to submit your questions for next week's episode of Dear Nero, simply send me a message here on YouTube. If you guys don't know how to do that, you go to my YouTube channel, go to the About section, and from there you should find a Send Message button. From there, send your message to me. Just start your message with the phrase Dear Nero. That way, when I'm scrolling through all my messages, I can easily identify which ones were specifically sent for Dear Nero. It's definitely easier that way. And just keep in mind, if you're somebody that uses a tablet or any kind of a mobile device, apparently, if you go to my About tab on YouTube, there's no Send Message button there. I don't know why that is. I have no idea how you send a message from a mobile device, so just use a computer to send your message, and things should be a-okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of Dear Nero. Remember to leave a rating. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.